Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are continuing our exploration of the Outlook object model. And in today's video, we are gonna take a single Excel table or list object as they are called and copy that over to an email in Outlook using Excel VBA. So we're just continuing our exploration of taking different Excel objects and then putting them into an Outlook email. So the second video related to this one, we'll do multi, but in this one, we'll just keep it uh, simple and we'll keep it a single one. Goal is to take this one right here and copy it over to Outlook. So let's get started. Let's jump into our Visual Basic Editor. And then from here, uh, we're gonna have to enable our object library. So we're gonna need one for Word and then one for Outlook. So a lot of people ask, why do I need to enable one for Word? Well, the actual email itself, it leverages the Word object model to display all the content, and we can basically consider that email itself as almost like a Word document. And so uh, if we wanna do a lot of manipulation with that document, we have to leverage the Word object model in order to do that. So to enable our libraries, we're gonna go up to the top of our ribbon bar, so right up here. We're gonna click Tools, References, this new window will pop up. Now I've used these libraries before, so I already see them at the top. However, if you're new to this, you will not see it at the top. So you're gonna have to enable these two, Microsoft Outlook Object Library and Microsoft Word Object Library. These libraries are in alphabetical order, so you just need to go down to M for Microsoft. The Outlook one will be somewhere right around here. And then the Word one will be somewhere right around here. And then once you do that and you find them, you just need to check the box like this and they will be enabled. You might see a different number. That just means you're on an earlier version. Everything we're gonna do in today's video should work fine unless you're on a very, very early version of Excel, like I'm talking, you know, early 2000s. Press okay. Let's get started and write our subroutine. So we'll call it sub table to outlook and then I'll put single, if I can type today. Perfect, close the brackets, end sub. We're gonna have to declare our variables. There are gonna be three groups of them. We're gonna have our Outlook variables, our Word variables, and then our Excel variables. So we'll declare Outlook variables first. The first one will be called Olook app, and then this will be the Outlook dot application object. So it'll be basically the instance of Outlook that we will create will be stored in this variable called Olook app. So then we can reference it later in our code. And then we're gonna need uh, something called a mail item, which is basically an email, and we'll call this Olook item. And then this one will be called an Outlook mail item object. So there's different items in Outlook. There's you know, meeting invites, notes, a lot of different things. We wanna work with an email in our particular instance. And then finally, we need to create another object variable uh, that is related to something called an inspector, so an Outlook inspector. And really, this is the window, uh, we can think of it at least, the window in which we're kind of viewing our email and we're inspecting it. Uh, so we're gonna basically create a reference to that object because inside that object is the actual Word object model itself that we need to reference later in our code. And then our next group is gonna be our Word variables. And the first one that we're gonna uh, create is gonna be called O Word Doc, and this one will be a Word document. So this will kind of basically be like the content itself. It's it's really part of the inspector if you think about it, but we can consider, consider this a Word document. And then we're gonna need a O Word range. So this is an actual a section of our particular document. So this is just allowing us to click and move through our document in an organized fashion, but it's a range object at the end of the day. And then finally, since we're taking an Excel table and we're gonna copy it into, um, what is it, Outlook, we're gonna consider that a Word table object. And so uh, we're gonna create it as such. So we're gonna create it as a table object. Now, in other videos, I've done OLE objects and all this kind of stuff. I try to make it a little bit of different type of variety just so that way you can see being pasted photos as you know tables, as the objects themselves. And really what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna show you how we can create these tables and then we can format them in a couple different ways. So it's actually pretty nice and neat once you get the hang of it. 
And then our final group of variables is gonna be Excel variables. And there's only gonna be one in this one, so it's gonna be uh, Excel table. And this one is just gonna be called a list object, which is basically just an Excel table. Okay, from here, we're gonna now create a new instance of Outlook. Now, I know for a lot of people, they have Outlook running in the background, so I'm gonna write this section a little bit different than in previous videos. So with Outlook, if I'm assuming it's open, I'm gonna try and first get the active instance of Outlook. However, if I can't get the active instance of Outlook that's already open, then I'm just gonna create a new instance. But if I'm gonna go and try to get it, and I can't get it, then I'm gonna get an error. So I need to tell my script that, hey, even if you encounter an error, keep going. So I'm gonna say on error, resume next. Perfect. And then from here, we're gonna get the active instance of Outlook if there is one. Now there's technically different ways you can write this. I'll just keep it simple at this point and just do how I've done it in other videos, but technically there are other ways we can write this. So we're gonna set the Olook app equal to get object comma string outlook dot application close our string close our brackets. It's gonna go and try to get it. Well, in my case, I don't have it open, so it's gonna fail. So what we're gonna say if, if there is no active instance, create one. And so what's gonna happen is we're gonna say, hey, if the error object that currently exists in our VBA object model, if the number property of that error equals 429, then we know to create a new instance. And so what we're gonna say is create a new instance. And we're gonna set our Olook app equal to a new Outlook application. So this will create it. We won't be able to see it because seeing Outlook is a whole different other beast and I'm gonna do a video on that shortly, uh, but this will at least create a new instant for us. Then from here, we need to create a new email. So we're gonna create a new email. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that Olook item, the one that we declared up above because we want our email to be in this variable. So we're gonna set that equal to our Olook app. We're gonna go into the create items method and then we're gonna specify a mail item, so an email. And then from here, now that we have an email, we need to create a reference to the table that we wanna copy. So we'll create a reference to the table. And we'll set our Excel table object equal to our active sheet dot list objects. And then we'll get the first one. So we'll use the key method and pass through the first one. And then, from here, we're gonna work with our Outlook email. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit. And I'm gonna say, okay, with my Outlook item, let's do some stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set some basic information about, so set basic info. That's things like, who are we sending it to? Well, we'll send it to a fake email, abc at xyz dot com, we'll put the CC equal to the same thing, right? And then we'll put the subject equal to my tables, and then we'll put the body equal to, here are my tables. Well, there's really only one, but at this point, who cares? And then we'll display the email, because we want to be able to see it before maybe we send it. So we'll call it the display method. Okay, so from here, let's see what we get, okay? Okay, so we got a basic email, basic information about it. Um, from here, I need to get the inspector, so that way I can get all this wonderful content right down here. So this is really our inspector, this little window in which we're viewing the the email. And so I'm gonna create a reference to that inspector. So I'm going to say, get 
the inspector. And so I'll set the OLOOK inspector equal to the get, sorry, the get inspector property. And then from here, we're gonna get the document in the inspector, which is really just the word editor. So get the word editor. And that's really the part that's referencing the word object model. So we're gonna set our O word doc equal, I'm pretty sure it's O word doc, yeah, equal to O look inspector dot application dot, what is it again? Oh wait, no, it's not application in this one. It's just the word editor. I always get those ones confused. Okay, there we go. So this is creating a reference to the word editor, which is really our document. And then from here, let's just copy the table. So we'll copy the table. So we'll take the Excel table, we'll go into the range property, which is basically the range that it takes up on our Excel worksheet. And then we'll call the copy method. So this will copy it to the clipboard. Now, I've talked to this about this before. Stability issues, stability issues, you know, stability issues. In this situation, usually with one table, it's not too bad. But once we start going to multiple tables, we'll deal with it. If it pops up, then we'll put it. Okay, so let's define the range that we want to paste it in. So define the range we want to paste it in. And we will set the O word range equal to the O word doc into the application, into the active document, and into the content. So this is all the content. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, where is it? We're gonna add a little sec, well, we're gonna basically collapse our selection. That's the way we should think about it. Um, we're gonna call the collapse method. So this will go to the end of our range we just have to specify a direction. Otherwise, it doesn't know um, where we want to go. And so we're going to say, hey, go to the end. Now, you can technically go to the beginning or start, but we want to go to the end. And then from here, we'll add a, a page break. So add a break. This will just make sure there's some space between our body text and then our actual table. And so we'll set, again, the O word range. Uh, where is it? Actually, I want to try something. Oh, word. Oh, wait, no, we have to do it like this. Um, o word range is equal to the O, the uh, o word doc. E and then we want to go into the paragraphs collection. And then we want to add a new paragraph. I guess it's not really considered a break in this situation, but we're basically adding a new paragraph, but then we're adding an insert break after this paragraph. Um, the reason I had to do a range is because technically this lives within our Word document, and then uh, it's within the paragraph, so it's almost like we're re-referencing it. And then once we've done this, uh, we'll go here, and then we'll call the insert break method, and then this will insert a break. Now we can paste the object. So we'll paste the object. And so we'll say, hey, take the range that we're currently on and then do the paste Excel table. And with the paste Excel table, you have to pass through all the parameters. Very important that you do that. And then there's word formatting. So this is basically, do you want it formatted like Word? I'm okay with that, to be honest. I think Word actually does a pretty good formatting, and then rich text formatting. I just always put that to true. And then this one obviously will also be linked back to Excel. So we're creating basically a linked Excel object. And then from here, we need to create a reference to this actual um, Excel table because we're going to just format it a little, little bit. So uh, create a reference to the table. And so we're going to set our O word table equal to our O word doc. We're going to go into the tables collection and then we're going to count all the tables that we currently have. I mean, I guess really in this one, we don't have to. We only have one. 
So we can just pass through one and this will create a reference to the first table. But if you had more than one, then you would more than likely have to count it if you wanted to just do it in a simple way for the most part. And now that you have that, we're just gonna do some basic formatting. So uh, we're gonna make sure uh, it covers the email. And there's a couple things that we're actually gonna do first. So one of the one properties that we'll set about it is the uh, the uh, allow auto fit. So basically this one is the content of the cell. So if you add more content to the cell for whatever, it will automatically fit it. Um, I'll set that equal to true. You don't have to, but you can. And then I'm gonna say auto fit behavior. What do I want? I want it to fit the window. So the actual window content itself. And when I do this, this is really a, all we need in order to just take a single Excel table. So uh, we'll run it and see what we get. But as you can tell, starting to get a little bit lengthy. Cool, so it pasted it, and as you can tell, added our little paragraph section, and then a little bit of space in between it. And then also you can tell it's now fitting the entire uh, length of the window. And if you also right click it, it's a linked object. So uh, we did a lot there in that one. But again, it's just kind of getting that familiarity where we're working with these tables and now we can kind of take them, put them in here, um, and then do some formatting. So that actually does it for today's video. If you have any questions about how to take, you know, an Excel table, put it into Word, sorry, not Word, <laughs> into Outlook, and do any kind of formatting or any of that stuff, please put your uh, questions down in the comments below. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, you know, we always appreciate the support. And then also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos on a whole host of more topics. Next video, we're going to move into multiple list objects. So good stuff. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.